Welcome to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host, John Barker, 70th District Representative. This is on a, a Friday, and John, you, uh, we couldn't get you in last week because you were busy at the legislature, but wow, oh wow, what a ton of stuff to that, that's happened, and we're yeah. going to go through some of that in just a minute. Okay. You'll notice that John usually brings out a special guest with him, but uh, uh -huh. to keep our social uh, uh, distance, why we've, we've made the guest uh, get rescheduled, and this exactly. way why we can work with this, and we have so much to go through. We didn't have room for another guest to go through because uh, the virus came through it nationally. Has. Every state, every county, every, every jurisdiction has been touched by this. And so tell me what's going on with the legislature and what in the world you've been up to because I know you have been really, really busy. Right. And I've seen the fruits of this for you because uh, um, Chapman is in your jurisdiction and uh, they got a $600,000 grant right. and uh, they could not have built a new water system, uh, um, wastewater, wastewater system, couldn't right. have done it without that. Solomon got $600,000 and they're in your territory. Right. And they were so proud when I was over there covering court for you yesterday, why they had a huge check on the wall, three, four feet. Yeah. And uh, they were so <laughs> thankful to have it because they could not have afforded it. And you got 600,000 for Marion for a project that they had. Right, right. And that's tremendous. Right, it came out of the Department of Commerce. Uh, they had money there for uh, community grants to, to assist communities to do certain projects that they normally couldn't do themselves. They didn't have the revenues. so. Uh, they, uh, those three communities applied. Uh, fortunately, uh, we were able to get those three uh, awarded. Uh, we had an award ceremony all two weeks ago, I think, and uh, uh, I was there for part of it, but I had committee meetings that I had to go back to, so I, I was there for uh, the award for Marion, uh, and uh, uh, missed the one at Chapman. They were coming in as I was leaving because I had <laughs> these meetings I had to go to, but uh, I was glad to see them get, uh, get the money, and I, I think it'll assist them. Uh, those projects are pretty pretty large, and so uh, the 600000 will help them uh, get those accomplished. Yeah, it would be difficult for a town of this size here in Chapman to be able to pick up a 1.2 or, or whatever it would turn out to right. be without that contribution coming in from the state, and, uh, and that's tremendous. I know you didn't do it on your own, and you're not, I've never heard you take the credit for it, but I do know this part of it, that uh, having a representative that's been there multiple times knows the agencies, knows the procedure, and, and it's just an advantage right. uh, to be able to do that and to be an advocate for uh, for your jurisdictions, right. your communities within the jurisdictions, right. and you have been and you were and still are for Eisenhower Center. There was some neat things that happened for well, the Eisenhower Center. We're working Center. on that one. Uh, of course, you know, uh, we've just cut our session, the first part of our session, short by about 10, 12 days. Mm -hmm because of the virus that's, uh, that uh, uh, is going around across the country. Right. Uh, you know, in Kansas, I, I get an update every, every morning. So far, there have been 38 positives in the state of Kansas. Uh, of course, we've had one death, which was in Johnson County. We have 47 counties that have declared, uh, not an emergency, but uh, have restricted uh, uh, services. Uh, you know, restaurants and bars have been closed in Shawnee County um, and and uh, and other counties. In Dickinson County, you right. can't go to a restaurant. Uh, hopefully, uh, with the social distancing and everything, that we will be able to turn the curve and and not keep going up, but start going down. Uh, you know, nationwide, it's we're so fortunate to live in Kansas. Yeah. You know, we're a rural state. Uh, we have plenty of distances. I mean, you go right. to some counties that have, you know, 1,300 people in the whole county. So that's helpful. Uh, but uh, last Friday, when I wasn't able to make it, we were working on uh, House Concurrent Resolution uh, 5025, uh, which is giving the governor um, uh, emergency uh, 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 ability to, to do certain things. We passed it uh, last Friday. Uh, then it went to the Senate, uh, then it ended up going into conference committee, and basically uh, what it does, it, it pursuant to our statute, and we really have two statutes, because normally we use this like for floods and tornadoes, uh, those type of things, uh, not a pandemic. Right. But um, 
So uh, we've had to modify that, and initially we gave her authority up until January of next year, understanding that the Senate would probably work on that and, and, and give us more time to, while we're in conference committee to work that out. And what it does is, you know, we, we, in government you always have checks and balances. To give one person all that authority without any checks or balances is not good. Right. So we came back with a, after our conference committee, we allow the LCC, because the governor can do it 15 days, the finance council can extend that emergency for another 30 days. But that's it. Then the legislature must act. Of course, we're only in session 90 days a year. So what we have done is we allow them to uh, uh, check every 30 days on the governor's, what the governor is doing. And uh, there will be uh, our representative. The LCC has made up the leadership of the House and of the Senate. And uh, they can make determinations as to whether they, the governor has overstepped her bounds or not. So that's the check and the balances. Okay. All right. Well, this would be a good time for us to cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with co-host John Barker, Representative uh, from the 70th District. And, uh, John, you were talking about what's been going on at the legislature. You were just finishing up. We cut away and took a break. Where do you want to go from here? Well, I'm going to go back to 5025, which is the emergency uh, uh, measure that we passed, giving the governor authority and, and having the LCC, the uh, Legislative Council, to oversee that every 30 days. But it, uh, on the screen, uh, we're going to post some of the uh, uh, contacts on our website that uh, uh, folks can go to and check the, uh, every day uh, where the virus is spreading to, if it is spreading. Uh, any additional things, there will be a hotline number for KDHE that you can call and get updates in case you think you have symptoms. You can call them, they can refer you where you need to go. Well, that's and, excellent. And be tested. That's so excellent. We, we'll put that up on the screen yeah. while John's talking about right. it right now. And you'll see those numbers. You'll be able to pull those off and follow the directions. And right. that's, and that's just awesome. Follow the, but, you know, we're, we're doing a really good job. And it's always nice when the legislature come to, comes together uh, and, and with the executive branch and the judicial branch. And we've actually worked together to get some of these emergency bills out. Uh, we put everything else on hold. Uh, those bills we can do next year, but we've we've been working on bills that we did the House or House substitute for Senate Bill 102, which has now been signed by the governor. It's it extends deadlines for the Supreme uh, for the Supreme Court. It gives the Chief Justice some authority, as you well know, uh, being a practicing attorney. You, you we have time limits on people who are incarcerated. You have to have a trial in 90 right. days, 180 days if they're out on bond. Correct. You can waive those for a number of reasons, usually on the defense request a continuance uh, and and uh, with jury trials bringing in large panels of civilians citizens to come in and select juries she can waive portions of that not the jury trial itself but the time limits in right. which they're set so uh, it and on other time limits like on on care and treatment cases where we can use video or audio just by phone to be able to make those hearings that are required by statute so she has that authority we granted her that uh, temporarily. Uh, we also did House substitute for uh, Senate Bill 142 concerning the education, uh, giving uh, the authority to the governor, which she has exercised. She's not closed the, the schools, she's closed the buildings. And, and Department of Education is working with every superintendent. They meet every morning by phone on a telephone conference to work out how they can uh, get the, uh, the, uh, the product the educational product out to the the uh, 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 students, whether it be audiovisual, internet. Uh, so we're working on that. The good thing we left all the funding in because we understand that you know, they're still going to have to function. Uh, we've allowed the uh, superintendents to, if they uh, would, uh, because they close schools, some of the non-classified people, which are the janitors, right. the cooks, and stuff, if they will still get paid. Uh, we've uh, allowed the, the lunches. The, the, there's, every district has worked out a program where uh, the, the kids that uh, are on free and reduced lunches, but not only that, every student Excellent. can actually go and pick up their lunches. They, you know, and, and they're working all that out with the superintendents. We're, do we're doing it in Dickerson County. 
Uh, we've extended uh, unemployment from 16 weeks to 26 weeks so that there are going to be restaurant help that are not going to be working, you know, waitresses right, right. And, and, other, and other manufacturers. So we've extended that. Uh, that fund, uh, as we think, has got enough money in it, but, you know, if we need to make uh, an emergency appropriation, we will do that. We're, we're just trying to get through this. And, and it's good, to, you know, it's just it, it, working together, uh, we've, we've accomplished quite a bit. Uh, we also adopted a, what we call a basic budget, because that's the only thing the legislature is required to do while we're in session is to, to, to pass a budget. Uh, we, we passed one, it was Senate Bill 66, uh, and it, 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 it doesn't have a lot in it, but it, it has what it had last year to keep the basic operation of government in place. We did put another $50 million in for the, the virus fund because we don't know what that's going to cost, and that will go to KDHE. Uh, but, uh, you know, I talked to Dr. Holmes, which is our, our, our medical health officer health for Dickinson officer County. State uh -huh. County. Uh, he's been very supportive, and we've tried to support him. Uh, but, you know, it, it's at some point in time, somebody's going to say, well, you did too much. Well, that's okay. I would rather be accused of doing too much, too much than, than too little <laughs> right. if it gets out of hand. So uh, I, I, I think the, uh, you know, and we have to listen to the experts. Uh, you know, I'm not a research person or, or a doctor, uh, so when they make those recommendations, we have to take it very seriously and w within the guidelines that we can do that. Uh, with the governor giving her the authority to, to act in an emergency, we've given her that. Uh, we've, we've worked with the schools. We've passed a budget. Uh, and uh, we can talk more about that than maybe in the next section about the highway plan that we did pass. Okay. Uh, we the budget uh, that we did pass. You know, we've got about a uh, 18 billion dollar budget, all funds. Then we got a state, the state general funds part of it we put in. Uh, but it has been a it's it's been a long week. Since this, last I time. bet it has been a long yeah. week. And, and in just a few seconds here, we're going to cut uh -huh. away, take a break. But what most people don't realize about this is that uh, while the rest of us have the opportunity to say, okay, we can kind of control what comes into the office, uh, where we go, <laughs> uh, the house, and those things that we live in, we can kind of control that. But in your setting, how many people are inside of that building that have to make these decisions? How, how many are we talking about in the well, legislature? We, we've got 125 in the House, and, and we're in close quarters. Yes, you are. Uh, then you've got your 40 senators. Uh, again, we work with those in conferences. We go into conference rooms and, and discuss their bills. Uh, so we were not social distancing, uh, but it was work that we needed to do. Right, right. And then you've got staff. Yeah, we've got staff so, on top of that. And the security coming in, so you're several hundred yeah. people at the at the very minimum, right. several hundred people. Every and, day. And everybody traveling different spots and locations, and so there's a lot of risk involved for being in the legislature uh, uh, yeah. from the standpoint that I don't know where this person's been, I don't know where that person's been, and so that can sweep through pretty quickly, but it's like you said, we don't have any choice. We, we have to do it. Yeah, you can't close the government. No, you can't close it. Uh, we're going to cut away, take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Legislative Updates with John Barker. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my co-host, John Barker. And John, we've been talking about what's been going on in the legislature this past week or two, mm -hmm. and there's a lot going on because of the virus has come through. But you also have the responsibilities, and you've been working on this, even uh, what I would call the off-season, meaning when you're, when you're not in session, mm -hmm. on the budget, because that is tremendously important, and that's a, the detail that goes into that is absolutely tremendous. So. Yeah. Uh, t have you been working budget while on top of the emergency situations too? We're always working on budget. Uh, well, we work it in, uh, on the off season because we have to go with uh, well, our consensus revenue, what they tell us our revenues will be. And that's the reason we did a basic budget, just to keep services functioning, adding some money for emergency services like the, the virus, uh, the $50 million. But, but, uh, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll get our consensus revenue, what they're projecting for the next few months in April, uh, with some sales taxes and other sources. We expect those to be down tremendously. Well, I imagine. Uh, so all the, the little additives that we add in budgets, uh, the raises and, and different things, those will wait for the omnibus bill, which is the last bill we normally pass, 
at the end of session to add, to add that additional revenue in at, or expenditures from the revenue. If we don't have the revenue, of course, we can't do that. Right. Uh, but uh, we did pass uh, the uh, transportation bill, which is, if folks would remember, the T WEC work, T Works project was under Brownback. It's coming to an end, so we needed another highway. And, and a lot of people are disgusted about, you know, us ta always going to the bank of KDOT and taking money out to, to do sta state functions. So we passed a, a, a Senate Bill 173. Uh, it came over from the governor's office. We did some changes. She had the name of it was Forward. Uh, we didn't think that was appropriate, so we renamed it the Eisenhower Legacy uh, Transportation. Oh, and he started the, the and he interstate started the interstate. He started yeah. the interstate. So uh, we thought, and, and he's a Kansan, a native Kansan, of course, from Abilene. Yeah. So I was. I, I encourage people to, to adopt that. Good job. Uh, so, but it also has a number of things. Uh, it's got eight million dollars to go to each county for county projects. Each county? Each county. Oh, and that's awesome. That's going to be tremendous for some of the smaller counties. And it will, and it also has railroad programs in it. It has an aviation program in it. It has public uh, transit pr uh, aid in there. It has transportation technology programs, and it has multi-model program to provide improvement assistance to, for, bike, for bike facilities, pedestrian facilities, and others. Uh, and there's also in there a portion of it for cost sharing with counties or cities for if they have a specific so project. A matching fund grant or, right, or some portion. Some portion of that. So uh, it, it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, uh, I, I went through it. Of course, it's, it's, uh, it's a huge bill, you know, when you're going out that many years. And we, uh, yeah, there'll be some bonding to it, uh, some dedicated uh, tax sales tax to it as, as it is now. I think it's mm -hmm. 7.5 or whatever. Uh, but uh, so we we can fund it, and we also put some safeguards in. Of course, it's difficult to bind future legislators. Right. But but we we're trying to stop the the bank of KDOT, where the, the legislature can always go and pick up a hundred million here or 150, 200 million there. And that sort of then it, right. no sort of it does delay it does. Uh, highway construction yeah. and improvements, yeah. bridges and so forth. But nationally, our highways are really good. Compared to Pennsylvania, have you ever been to Pennsylvania Turnpike? No, it's been a while. It's uh, been a while. Or the uh, uh, some of the larger cities, uh, you know. So, so our mm -hmm. highways are, are ranked nationally in the top ten always. So we, we we have good highways, but we need to keep good highways. Yeah. So that's the reason we come to that. Uh, but the economy is what's concerning all of us. You know, bar uh, oil was selling two weeks ago for thirty-five dollar a barrel. It's down to ten dollars. Of course, that's a Big commodity for the state of Kansas. That is oil is, uh, you know, uh, our, our agricultural commodities. You know, we don't know where we're going to sell them to. Right. We can't sell them to China, maybe. I, who knows? We just don't know. And, and and all that brings in revenue to the state. So we're very cautious at this point about spending additional funds that we don't have. Uh, now, uh, I think as far as the the, the uh, uh, virus goes, we're going to spend what we need. Right. But on other things, they may have to wait a year or two. If we don't know how long this is going to last, uh, we are in, as one legislator mentioned, we're in unknown times. Uh, we're, we're trying to do something that's probably never been done before, trying to curb a virus that is spreading, much like the influenza of the uh, virus of the 1911, which killed you know, thousands. Yeah. Tens of thousands yeah. of people. So we're we're trying to get a handle on that. Uh, but uh, I want to be on telephone conferences with different legislators during the break. Uh, hopefully, we can go back on the 27th. But we need to get back there at least by the 21st of May. Uh, so we've got the date set. The uh, LCC can change that based upon circumstances at the time. But we need to get back in before the 21st of May. Yeah. So it's really not uh, it's really not a break when it's a break you uh, have a break from being in chambers but you're really really busy in the preparation and everything yeah. that goes with it and yeah. and uh, I was reading one of the articles you gave me uh, some time ago about how much Brazil has improved their ability for farm produce right. and Russia and so those are true competitors against us we're going to cut away take a break we'll be right back you're watching legislative updates 
Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm Doug Thompson with my co-host John Barker. And John, as always, I thank you so much for coming in and getting that information to us because what a treasure that is for us to be able to have somebody that's at the level you are in the legislature comes in and shares that with us. And most people don't realize it. And I tell you, I really appreciate the fact that that the legislature has considered those people who are waiting tables, who are doing those things, and their money's lost, and and uh, they it was tight for them before. before. And so I, I just really appreciate what the legislature has done. And John, as we look back at this time right here, is there any parting words you want to give to the to the viewers? Yeah, you know, Kansas historically pulled together in emergencies, whether it's snowstorms and blizzards, or whether it's prairie fires, tornadoes flooding, whatever we've, we've always uh, pulled together. And I think that we're doing that now. Both sides of, of the political spectrum are pulling together. We want to help the people of the state of Kansas. Uh, I just want people to follow the guidelines. That's the bottom line, follow the guidelines. We'll see you next time on Legislative Updates. Thanks for watching.